Hello gorgeous peeps, this is Chris from Text and today I'm here with two of Motorola's freshest Moto G series smartphones, the G8 Power and the G8 Plus. As you can see from the front, not a massive amount of difference between the two and in terms of cost not much either. £230 you can grab the Moto G8 Power, G8 Plus slightly more expensive at £240. So what I'm going to do now is run through the specs, the features, the overall experience you'll get from both these handsets to work out which one might be best for you. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now first up, as you can tell from just a quick squint, they are more or less the same size. The G8 Power is slightly bigger with its 6.4 inch display compared with the 6.3 inch G8 Plus and slightly heavier at 197 grams as well. But even though the G8 Power is technically the bigger device, it actually doesn't feel any bigger when you're gripping it, mostly because the G8 Plus has got slightly fatter bezels surrounding that display, so it kind of evens it out. And Motorola is definitely still a fan of its darker colors. You can pick up the Moto G Power in basically black or dark blue. Meanwhile, the G8 Plus, you've got this cosmic blue version, which is again, a dark bluey black, uh, but you can also pick it up in a pink uh, hue if you prefer something a bit more colorful. The design is very similar here on the G8 Plus and the G8 Power. As you can see, the power's got a sort of a linear effect on the back end, which is quite subtle, kind of hard to see unless you're sort of properly squinting, uh, whereas on the uh, Plus, it's more of a straightforward, smooth finish, but they're both constructed from plastic. Both of them will scuff up a little bit when you start fingering them, so to speak. Uh, you get all those greasy prints all over them and also they are susceptible to scratches but thankfully Motorola has bundled a uh, plastic sheath in the box for both of these devices to help keep them in a good state. And the good news is as well that both the G8 Power and the G8 Plus are water repellent. They've got an IP52 certification. So basically that means don't go take them in the shower. Definitely do not submerge them in water. But if you're out in the rain, absolutely no worries at all. They'll be absolutely fine. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll also have noticed that the G8 Power and the G8 Plus both have a rear mounted physical fingerprint sensor, slightly indented into the surface. So they're easy to find when you're fumbling about with the phone. And of course, a nice bit of Moto branding in both. And that scanner is nice and responsive and accurate on both of these smartphones as soon as you tap your finger to the sensor, as you can see, immediate unlock. Now flip around to the front and you get a gorgeous IPS display on both these devices, 6.4 inches here on the G8 Power and 6.3 on the G8 Plus. Now you can actually play around with the color output on both these devices. As you can see, they're set to saturated by default, but you can knock them down to more natural hues if you'd prefer. Now doing a side-by-side -side comparison between the G8 Power and the G8 Plus, you'll see the G8 Plus seems to have slightly warmer colors than the G8 Power, though there's not a huge amount in it. And the good news is that it's a full HD plus resolution on both of these blowers. You get nice crisp visuals, absolutely stunning stuff. If you're just enjoying a movie, on the go. Of course, you do get a tiny little peephole camera here for your selfie snapper on the G8 Power, whereas it's a proper full-on notch here on the G8 Plus. So though, to be fair, it's only a little nipple notch here on the Plus. It doesn't exactly intrude far into that display. So in both cases, you get a nice full view experience without too much uh, bother at all. The viewing angles are nice and strong and those top brightness levels, you'll have no problem with visibility outdoors, anything like that. Excellent stuff overall from Motorola as usual. Definitely impressive stuff on the audio front as well. You get a stereo speaker set up on both of these devices, which is pretty rare for a budget blower in general. So the fact that Motorola has managed to do it on both of these handsets is fantastic. And you do get a uh, bit of headphone jack action on both of these blowers as well. And you've got a good bit of Bluetooth 5 support on both these devices if you'd rather go wireless. Now it's also worth pointing out as well, while we're on the subject of software and features, you get a fresh new Android 10 OS here on the Moto G8 Power, whereas the Plus is still lingering on Android 9. It should be getting an update soon, but for now you're stuck with the standard navigation bar down below. You don't have the lovely gesture navigation, which you get here on the G8 Power. And of course you've got that lovely dark mode as well here on the Power, whereas that's not a thing yet here on the Plus. But as I say, hopefully that should be getting an update imminently. However, one feature that is missing in action here on the G8 Power is unfortunately NFC. There is no support for that. Whereas you do get NFC here on the G8 Plus. So if you're going to be using your smartphone for wireless payments, things like that, then your only option will be the Plus. So let's have a gander at the performance. And in this sector it is a dead heat between the G8 Power and the G8 Plus because they both rock the Snapdragon 665 chipset backed by four gigs of RAM. So a nice nippy everyday experience. You'll see the odd little stutter here and there, but absolutely fine. So it's not exactly a massive shock that both of these phones turn out basically the same Geekbench 5 score. And I found that certainly uh, here on the G8 Plus, you can play PUBG Mobile on those low detail settings with a perfectly playable frame rate. So I'm expecting exactly the same uh, performance out of the G8 Power as far as gaming goes. Of course, the big advantage that the G8 Power has over the G8 Plus is the battery. You get a mighty 5,000 milliamp cells stuffed inside there compared with the 4,000 milliamp here 
on the plus so it can keep you going for that little bit longer. I found that the Jeep Power it looks like it'll basically do you two full days, no worries, even with plenty of screen time. And the Jeep Plus it'll do you about a day and a half between charges usually, but you'll probably be charging it every night just to be sure. But you've got support for the same 15 watt turbo power charge here on the Power and the Plus. Obviously the Power will take a little bit longer to fill up because it's got the larger capacity cell. And there is bugger all difference in the storage. The G8 Power and the G8 Plus both sport 64 gigs of onboard storage and you can expand them both via micro SD up to another 512 gigs. So plenty of space for your apps, your media, everything you need. So now let's have a quick squint at that camera tech. And here on the back of the G8 Power you get a quad lens setup whereas here on the G8 Plus it's just a triple lens setup. Just. Uh, still pretty good obviously for a budget blower. Now on the G8 Plus that primary lens is actually stronger. It's a 48 megapixel f1.7 effort compared with the 16 megapixel f1.7 here on the G8 Power. You also get an ultra wide angle lens on both of these blowers although in the case of the G8 Plus it's an action cam ultra wide angle a 16 megapixel for shooting a funky video which we'll touch on in a second whereas in the case of the G8 Power it's an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens for your photo as well as video. But then while the G8 Plus is rounded off with a simple depth sensor in the case of the G8 Power you've actually got an 8 megapixel telephoto lens giving you a 2 times optical zoom as well as a dedicated macro lens. So for the most part open up the camera app on both of these mode roller blowers and it's a very similar experience just point and shoot you've got a full manual mode on both of them if you don't want to use the auto mode you actually want to play around with the likes of the uh, the white balance the ISO levels or shoot in raw format as well both of these devices will allow you to do that. Now by default the Moto G8 Plus actually shoots photos at 12 megapixels rather than the full 48 megapixels that's because it uses pixel binning in order to combine the information from four pixels into one so for a brighter shot in lower light conditions definitely great stuff. So I'm expecting to get better low light performance out of the G8 Plus compared with the G8 Power uh, but that said on the G8 Power here of course you can swap at any point to that ultra wide angle lens to fit more into your photo or to the telephoto lens in order to get a closer view of a naked mouse thing and it's a two times optical zoom so great just for getting unintrusive shots of your kids your pets things like that. And of course if you swipe to the side you've got access to a full range of Motorola bonus modes as well. Unfortunately there's no night vision mode here on the G8 Power compared with the G8 Plus which of course does come with that night vision mode so that's a bit of a shame it's a bit of a, uh, a missed opportunity there I feel uh, but you do get the macro shot mode here on the G8 Power using that dedicated macro mode so if you want to get up close shots of a subject then I guess that's good. And if we swap to the video mode you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage on either of these blowers but as you can see here on the G8 Plus you've got the action cam mode as well as first introduced on the Motorola One Action. What this allows you to do is shoot standard horizontal video but while you're clutching the phone vertically great idea and you've got proper built-in image stabilization as well so good if you're moving at speed you're going to be cycling jogging anything like that. And that can be toggled on or off with a quick tap of this little icon down here. And then if we just swap around to the front facing camera as well you get a 16 megapixel selfie shooter here on the Moto G8 Power and it's a 25 megapixel here on the G8 Plus. You get slightly crisper footage, you've got the usual beauty mode, gumph and all of that and you can shoot a bit of portrait mode action as well if you like. And there you have it, that in a nutshell is the Moto G8 Power versus the Moto G8 Plus. As you can see pretty much the same cost but the G8 Power and the G8 Plus Plus different camera features. The G8 Power is a bit more up to date when it comes to the Android type but hopefully the Plus one won't be too far behind. In terms of performance and everything they're pretty much level pegging but the battery life the Moto G8 Power is definitely the stronger of the two. So which one are you most tempted by? Definitely be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely week people. Cheers, love you!